The standard lamp at that time was a single burner kerosene lamp used in most homes when this was built. Latest was closed, sat there for about a year. It was, it was done very secretly. No one knew what was taking place till they were burned. The Coast Guard burnt them? Yeah. Really? Okay, I'm sitting with Jack McAleenan, his father used to run the Navy Bar Lighthouse, and he is showing us what the light consisted of. Standard lighthouse lamp of the time, not much different than the lamps used in most homes, except that it did have two burners, which doubled the amount of light. If this lamp was properly trimmed, it would burn from sundown until sunrise in the morning. If not, it would use up the fuel too early or it would soot up the chimney and the light would be greatly reduced. The other high-tech part of this light, that if it was to be used at a different lighthouse, one perhaps displaying a red light like Head Harbor, then this would have to be installed and we have now a red light. Brilliant. Really. And that was really it? That was enough to keep people off the Navy bar? It was. This sits inside a prism, of course, so it is multiplied thousands and thousands of times. Yeah, amazing. Yes, it is. And so your father went out every day and did that? He did. Um, every evening to light the lamp and every morning to extinguish it. On foggy days, it may be more trips. Uh, the bell operated by a clockwork, very similar to what would be used to run the clock in the Grunick Church. And as it would go down, instead of moving the hands, it would ring the bell. A fully wound clock would last for six hours. So on foggy spells, you had to be there every six hours, which often meant that you stayed at the lighthouse to be sure you were back for the next winding of the bell. Do you remember going out there with your dad? I do, yes, and winding the bell. Winding the bell. Where, you... where is the bell now? I have no idea where it went to. I, I suspect just got probably burned up in the fire. It was a rather finicky thing, only he was allowed to oil it. Not enough or too much made it seem to stop. And you had to wind it slowly. What difference that made, I do not know, but it was always a rule when we were winding the bell. I think most kids in this town for a 20 year period at some chance had a chance to wind the bell. Really? Yes. That picture is Tom Scholl. Yeah. And when did this one get destroyed? It was, it was torn down in, before I remember it, so I'm going to say in late 50s. Late 50s. Mm -hmm. This was a, a standard lighthouse design, mm -hmm. um, sometimes land-based, mm -hmm. sometimes on piers, sometimes on wharves. Mm -hmm. They just took the same house and moved it around uh -huh. for that time period. Uh -huh. Lightest was closed for redundant purposes. It sat there for about a year. The Coast Guard was very uh, determined not to let anyone know they were going to burn those. It was done very secretly. No one knew what was taking place till they were burned. The Coast Guard burnt them? Yeah. Really? Oh. Well, that's interesting, because look. Because they both burn. There they are. Yeah. They burn them and then set up a market. They didn't want to maintain them. See, Frank McAleenan was the last lighthouse keeper. Now, in his day, he didn't have to go out there and stay unless there was a severe storm predict that he'd go out uh, prior and, uh, and be there in case they had to do a backup. 
And it's like the cartoon about the ship running to the lighthouse, and the lighthouse keeper, the captain said, why wasn't your light on? He said, I didn't think there would be anyone out on a night like this. <laughs> That's very helpful because that explains what the Coast Guard ship was doing there. Yeah. And not doing. <laughs> they certainly weren't putting it out, were they? No.